when you identify what he's doing wrong, other than, hey, should have hit it higher or something very vanilla, it's a more complicated than just the correction or just the technique, you know? Uh, like Chris said, if the elbow's coming in or whatever, that's gonna take a little bit of time and there's a <laughs> lot of tricks I can do to kind of help that. But the main thing is the parameters of what we're trying to do, if those are just met, as he gets a little bigger and a little stronger, a lot of this is easier to pull off, okay? Because the strength does come into play because when the kids feel like they don't have the strength, they want to increase the radius of the swing and that's where it's hard to hold some of these positions that we're talking about. But all that being said, I have kids younger than him, smaller than him that can do it. So I don't want to use the, the strength factor or only guys can do it when they're older. I think that's a cop-out because I have kids that can definitely do what we're saying. But it takes two to tango. You know, you've got to keep reinforcing it and the kid has to know what they're doing to reinforce it also. Ready? So if you remember, and last we worked, uh, we worked on having him hold it longer and stay his arm left. watching over here. He didn't do it. Uh, he wasn't doing it. And while Coach is here, let me explain that. And, and this is, now if you had a kid that was really, really tight, all right, really tight, you know, maybe letting go of the racket as a corrective technique to make him loosen up, I get it, all right? Or, like any kid that comes here from Volatari's, if I say one thing, when they go there, they, they tell them the exact opposite. And it's more about them than helping the kid. They're just gonna say, oh, don't do that. But I want the kids to hold onto the racket and the racket. When they hold onto the racket longer into this position, two things happen. Number one, the shoulder turn is very, very prominent, okay, and aggressive. When you can get them to hold onto the racket longer, they're gonna emphasize this side of the body. As I told you guys, that's the number one mistake with most forehands around the world, that the people don't turn correctly. They open up way too soon. So the coach is saying, oh, your head's going back, your shoulder is, your left arm's doing this. They're correcting the symptom, but I'm just telling you, if you can keep this hand on longer and lock him into this position longer from the baseline, not running up, running up's a different deal. From the baseline, it's, it, it solves a lot of problems. It's the number one mistake, the left side opening up on the forehand, because more can go wrong. That's why you see the two and the backhand, people hit it better, they're just connected because of the two hands, keeps them locked in. So, and with him, he would let go and just kind of get a little wild. The longer he goes, keeps it on, it's gonna help turn the left, but here's the other thing. There's a higher probability, what Brian found out with almost all the kids, when we keep them on as long as possible, till the last second they feel, I don't wanna say rushed, but they feel they have to kind of hurry up and hit the ball, and they're kind of forced a little bit when they let go to feel like they gotta swing from there and pull it. See, they, they swing from a three-quarter swing, where when they let go, or say he gets it here and lets go, then the racket can get a little bit back, or the elbow gets back, and all these other problems that we constantly have to correct, it seems, occur. And the ones that have held on longer, more younger kids, they keep it on longer, it doesn't happen. They, they've been able to get better sooner in our eyes because the elbow stays still, the hand has a tendency to go more to the outside because they wait long, almost till the ball hits, and then they do the stroke. And it's very violent, dynamic at the end. Now, all that being said, if the kid was tight, maybe we would tell him to let go, but this is more for him to be his own coach. Plus, the kids don't like to do it. When the ball comes over, they're thinking, I gotta hit it. So they're already wanting to put their racket somewhere, and a lot of things, technically, with the way we're trying to do the stroke, start getting messed up. And the final thing, better. Let's just use him as a model, all right? Every time, and I mean every time, Hand stays right here. He's gonna go, he's gonna keep it on, he's gonna keep it on, he's gonna keep it on. And the space between the elbow and the body is about like this, way back, it's way back. It's not here, way back. But he has the hand on here still. Then he'll let go of the racket. So his unit turn, same thing on the overhead. He, he, he gets into the position. It's the 
opposite arm, the opposite hand, that's a very good teaching tool. But if he does it, I think that's one reason everybody should do it, if nothing else. Even though I'm not saying do it because Federer does it, I'm just saying he does it, by the way. And I'm sure there's a lot of other guys that do the same thing. I mean, Andy put the racket like this, and then let go. So, but at the end of the day, I think that for the younger kids, they're sloppy, they're not strong, they want the radius bigger, more goes wrong, then goes right. Best teaching tool ever. Best, the best. And he changed his grip. Yeah, we. He's look, been working on that. Let, let's, Is he semi look, or western? You, you well, had him west. You, you moved him to, semi. to more of a semi. Can you? Can you? Can we all be on the same page on what grip you want him in? He was further under. Yeah, sure. where were you? I was probably around here. Yeah, if he can go semi, I'm just telling you, there's unless he had amazingly fast hands. Which he does have pretty good. What was hands. happening is he was going, he was ended up like this when he was Western, and he didn't like that because it was, it was actually. It has to. It's, it, yeah, so you wanted him out here. So he's been working on it. He just. Well, it has to. See, look, if I hold the racket with a Continental and I have my hand this way, and then I go to an Eastern, and then I go to a Semi, and then I go to a Western, you can see when I go back how the hand is going to, it changes the orientation of the racket. So it just gets complicated. Then you get the kids end up doing this. They go. Yeah. They start playing like that a lot with their hand. So if he can go semi, that's because the grip orientates the racket face. So yeah, for sure. Have him take his lumps. You get more power. You still get the spin. Semi is the way to go. And he doesn't have to go quite as far. We never talk about this on the return of serve. Okay. And I'm not saying he can. I'm just saying when you start getting some big Western grips. On the return of serve, I mean, it gets to be hairy when the balls come fast. So you don't have as far to go. It doesn't seem like that's a big deal, yeah. but you know, it's no, what it's I do. It's a huge deal. It's huge. You send up, there's some guys that are so far under, you know, Jay Berger, when he used to play, he would just say, heck with this. He yeah, sliced, sliced the return. He sliced every, everyone. First hand, he didn't, he just, every first serve, he would chip. And there's guys out there that do it now because they know the guy's not coming to net. So they even do it. Some of these guys that are way under, even on the tour, that would be tough to do. So back to what we were talking about. What I want him to do with, with his ground stroke is the whole concept is once he goes here, you don't want the elbow to move, okay? You want the elbow to extend. Now where it extends, I don't know if it was him or someone else. You want to be a little bit more to diagonal, but you want the hand to be on this side of the body. I just don't want, we don't, you can't do the stroke what we're talking about if the racket's going like this. That's like a girl stroke, you know, when the racket goes this way. And then it's a semicircle. We want the elbow up in this position, okay? Right there, it doesn't matter. But then the elbow doesn't move, he just goes this way. And then he pulls the racket. Now the problem is when the kids pull it, they go like this, okay? And what you want to have happen when you pull it, you want to get the elbow to come up. And that's the difference between, when you see guys like Federer and Djokovic, they're hitting the ball like that. Or even if he did this pretty good, he's gonna pull it and the kids come back in. A little bit of that is strength, so I don't want anybody okay. to freak at that. Okay. Okay, because that, that I just seen kids do what you say he's doing, and then in a couple years, okay, I see them more like this, and they don't come back in. Okay. Because if you can get this to that position, you just engage the shoulder so much better on the stroke, and that's what these guys with the best forehands do. So that's why you don't want the elbow really coming back in. So show me what what you're doing real quick before I start feeding you. Time out. See, to me, he just let go of the, he has to be all in with this preparation. He has to be all in, like what I call loaded and locked. He should lock the preparation. Chris, I thought, of, he should lock it and hold it. Do you see these guys, it, it looks like they're, they're, they're just waiting like this, it looks like. Where you watch the kids, that's why you see them. They, they look like they're all over the place. And the kids have more time than the guys on TV. But they don't do it. They've got a lot more time. But they're anxious mentally. So they let go and they start doing this stuff. And I'm not saying it's wrong. But what we see is there's a lot of mistakes that occur with the elbow position. The elbow position. The elbow position coach tells us everything. And I'll get into this on the boring back. It tells us everything about what goes on and where things should be. Unit turn, bang. So, different print, whether he's here, 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 I wouldn't worry about that. The main thing is, 
the feet. Go ahead, grab the racket. What? Relax a little bit. What happens next? Well, I want to make sure that when he comes out of the loop, when he comes out of the loop, and by the way, this is what people don't understand, and I'm glad that he's... People think a loop is something like this, okay? Even though it is a loop, okay? These guys on the tour don't do that. See, they don't, that's not the loop. The loop is this, what? See, I'm here, this is the loop. See how I, see the loop, how the racket, remember I said elbow up, elbow extension. Elbow up, half the dog. They don't like to chop it like I showed him in the beginning. From here, they shape it to the outside, and that's the loop. See, they do the unit turn, so this looks, you see the racket's up, but now they're here, and then they do, this is the loop and the swing. Now, if it comes so fast they can't stop, sure, they would do something like this. They would make it continuous. Does that make sense? But the loop isn't like they're looping the racket like the women do, like that. The loop, if there is such a thing, or a little C or R, the looping action is that. that that's, that's the loop. 